what's up everybody welcome back to another video as part of the chosen series this is part two of week one of chapter seven um if you're following with me so the previous video that i posted is about verses one through 15 um and we're studying really the speech of stephen in this chapter and so um, if you are not caught up or if you're not understanding what's going on in the video, you're welcome to backtrack. Go um, check out the previous videos in this series where I check, where I kind of explain everything that's happening up until this point. And so at the beginning of this chapter or this part of the chapter, we're in the middle of Stephen's speech. As he's explaining why he's preaching about Jesus or why he's preaching this controversial me controversial message that the people are accusing him of, of, of teaching and so we're gonna start in this video at verse 17 and we're gonna read all the way to verse 36 so again this chapter is gonna take a couple weeks to cover this is week one and then in the next two videos will be week two and in verse 17 it reads but as the time of the promise drew near, which God had granted to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt until there arose over Egypt another king who did not know Joseph. He dealt shrewdly with our race and forced our fathers to expose their infants so that they would not be kept alive. At this time, Moses was born and he was beautiful in God's sight. And he was brought up from three months in his father's house. And, we, and when he was exposed, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And he was mighty in his words and deeds. When he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his brother would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging his neighbor thrust him aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this retort, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight, and as he drew near to look, there came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses trembled and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out performing wonders and signs sorry, in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. All right, so we just read through again, verses 17 through 36. I do not want to get into the details of the backstories that Stephen is mentioning right now, but I want to kind of highlight a couple of verses just to give you some context about where Stephen is going with this. And so, in last week's weekly study scriptures that I posted on my social media accounts, I highlighted a few verses um, throughout the course of the week to bring your attention to specific concepts and themes in this speech that will help you to understand where Stephen is going. And I used in the last couple of verses, I used um, verse 25 I use verse 34 and I use verse 36 so briefly I want to break those few few verses down just to give you an idea of where we are in the speech of Stephen um, so in verse 25 he supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand but they did not understand so at this point we're introduced to Moses in Stephen's speech he brings about the idea that 
um, this salvation that he's preaching about began with Abraham and now Moses is brought into the picture when he was born he was um, adopted by an Egyptian mother his Egyptian mother um, he was b raised in their household in the Egyptian household and he spoke well in their household he learned and gained knowledge um, and really was just one of the best in their household um, but as a result of um, God placing I truly believe that God placed on his heart to see about his Israelite brothers because he knew that he was adopted um, he, I truly believe that he was led by God to see about his Israelites brothers. Otherwise, in and of his own self, he knew, he only knew the Egyptian household or, or he was raised up in it. So it could not have been Moses's effort alone that led Moses to check on his Israelite brothers because the Israelites were enslaved at the time. And so as a result of checking on his brothers, Moses defends one of the Israelites against the Egyptians and kills one of the Egyptians. And as a result, Moses tries to reason with his brothers and explain, do you not see the issue going on here? Like, am I not, you know, worthy to make these kinds of decisions? Like, do you understand why I did what I did? But in this verse that I highlighted, it says he supposed that his brothers will understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand. But they did not understand. So I truly believe at this point is when Moses was beginning to, under, to his eyes were beginning to be open to his calling. To why he was being chosen by God to do what he did. Now it wasn't revealed until he actually encountered the burning bush. But I truly believe that him defending an Israelite brother is not normal for someone of an Egyptian household. That's not something that the Egyptians do. Although... They were very well aware of the enslavement that was happening with, um, by the Egyptians, with the Israelites. None of them would have ever stood up against an Egyptian doing their job because that was their job. That was their, their way of making um, a living by having these men work and do their jobs for them and do things um, in Egypt for them um, by force. So... Truly, it had to be a calling of God for Moses to step out and do this. And then as we keep reading, the verse 44 goes down to after Moses encounters this burning bush. It says, and I've surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their groaning and I've come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. So this is more so confirmation for Moses because in some sense, like I said, he recognized that these men would be delivered by his hand. He just didn't know how. And now... God revealing himself through this burning bush saying that I've seen the afflictions. I have not forgotten my brothers. I have not brothers. I have not for, forgotten my chosen people. I have not forgotten the ones that um, I have called to myself to become, to walk in the land that I promised to Abraham. Like I have not forgotten them. You are the hand that will deliver them out of Egypt and now is the time. And then we read verse 30. Six, where it says this man led them out perform performing wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years and so you read the backstory of that when you read the Old Testament about how they were in the wilderness for 40 years several uh, things happen for that to be the case but regardless he performed wonders. He performed signs like God used Moses to bring these children of Israel out of Egypt into deliverance, into freedom, into um, a purpose that God had called them to. But the main theme of this is just to understand that Moses was also chosen by God specifically to accomplish this will, his will to free the Israelites and to bring them into the land which God was giving them based on the covenant he made with Abraham which we learned about earlier in chapter 7 um, to fulfill the ultimate promise of bringing everything under Jesus and so as you're reading through these it's important not to skip that's why I'm breaking this down that's why I'm revisiting these themes that we learn about in the Old Testament these stories that we hear often that we think we are acquainted with but really should be digging deeper into because you can never stop learning first and foremost and secondly there's so much more that connects Jesus and these men that we can miss if we don't slow down and take our time and read through these things so I pray that as you're reading this week that as you're studying your word that 
you be open to those themes. You be open to the Holy Spirit revealing God to you through his word like like never before. Honestly, just submitting your logic, submitting your will, submitting even your mindset to, to, to Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to take over and feed you and to teach you the things of God so that you can grasp his perfect plan and will for creation for all of time through Jesus. Thanks for watching. I pray that as you're reading this, that you will continue to read by faith. And as you read by faith, you will continue to grow in grace. Join me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, um, on Instagram, and also you're watching YouTube. I will be continuing these themes next week as I uh, post about the rest of chapter seven in parts three and four. I'll talk to you later. Bye.